Opal's cat. When do prescription drugs expire? Hold on, this is going to actually be new information and interesting. Almost all prepping videos online and almost all videos online about prescription drug shelf life use the shelf life extension program that's run by the FDA in America for their Department of Defense. And I'm going to go back to that because it has some good points. But there is other information out there that is actually way more important for preppers to know about prescription drugs and their extension and shelf life than is actually contained within the uh, shelf life extension program. So for over 20 years the FDA has run this program, they've tested a whole bunch of drugs under various different conditions etc etc and what they came up with are almost all prescription drugs if properly stored, that means about 60 Fahrenheit, very dry, not humid, no light will last about a year after their expiry date and most of them, about 88%, will last 66 months after their expiry date. This is where we get fascinating with this stuff, okay? They actually claim that they have to keep testing the same drugs from the same manufacturers over and over, which is sort of true, but also provides them a ready source of income for the rest of their life. And I would also question why have they not tested more drugs than they've tested? It's 122 drugs only. That's not a lot of drugs in today's world. So I was sent on this quest by a great son of mine called Richard, uh, Richard J. And he sent me a photograph of his medications that he's on and said, when exactly will they expire? Absolutely fascinating question. I don't have a specific answer to you for those three specific drugs. What I can tell you is what I've learned is that they will last at least five years. And from what I can tell, they will actually last 40 or more years, but we'll get into that. So I think from a prepping point of view, what you want to know is how long will my drugs last me and be effective? So the first thing to know about drug expiry dates is that there are two drug expiry dates, one from the manufacturer, after which date they cannot guarantee 100% efficiency. 99 is pretty good, 80 is fine for most drugs. However, they also have a secondary expiry date that's also usually put on by the pharmacist and that expiry date on the actual bottle by the pharmacist is usually the date where they want you to get a new prescription. It actually usually isn't anything to do with the medications. So right from the beginning you can't really trust the expiry dates. As with everything, the sooner you use a product the more likely it is to be working 100% efficiently. But I just said they can last up to 40 years. Where did I get that from? Okay, this guy works for the Californian Poison Control System. He's an associate professor of uh, pharmacology at the University of California, San Diego. And this is really interesting. He's uh, put this paper together, and NPR have it. I would go with the original paper if you can. But this is actually a very reasonable way of looking into it. And there's lots of pictures in it and stuff like that, and I'll put them up. Basically, most pharmaceutical drugs, medications, are thrown out and have been thrown out for years and years and years. So to actually get your hands on expired drugs that are sufficiently expired to actually make any sort of testing to say whether they're still viable is extremely difficult. So he was fortunate to find a random box of drugs at the back of a pharmacy that had been ignored for over 40 years. Some of them predated the 1969 moon landing. He assumed they'd mostly be poison or junk, but he decided to have them tested. After all, he works in poison control. It's estimated $765 million worth of medications are thrown out in the US every year. That's about a quarter of your actual healthcare budget, uh, which I don't agree with, but that's what they say. The question is, why are they being thrown out? Well, obviously, like tomato ketchup in the bottle, if you have to buy a new bottle of ketchup, that's profit for the manufacturer, and actually the ketchup that stays in the bottle is actually free money for the manufacturer. There's no incentive for the pharmaceutical companies to have long-lasting medications. They actually want them chucked out. So back to the pharmacy box they found. They had 14 drugs. Uh, they were sealed in their original packaging, and they'd been kept at room temperature without light. So they've been kept reasonably well, though completely ignored. They actually had 14 compounds, antihistamines, pain relievers, and stimulants. Some of them are quite funny. Uh, I guess they're not that funny, but it just shows when you talk about opioids how the history of this is there. One of the medications they actually looked at uh, was Obocell. Obocell was uh, 
pitched to doctors by Mr. Obocell and Bambex. Uh, these are diet pills, which were very, very commonly used way back when. So of the 14 medications left in their bottles for over 30 years to maybe 40 years, how many of those medications were effective? This was the shocking thing. Of the 14, 12 were almost 100% efficient to be used for their original medication purpose. That's pretty shocking, isn't it? This goes way beyond the self expiration and maybe for five years or ten years people will tell you about. If they're kept in a non-humid sealed container away from humidity most medications will be almost 100% effective 30 to 40 years after they were stored. That's great news for preppers. Now the federal government has long since in the United States kept drugs well years and years and years after their expiry dates. They know this stuff. The reason they haven't actually implemented it, though it would save billions of dollars in healthcare costs very easily in the United States, is because pharmaceutical companies have no financial incentive to let this sort of information be known and for this sort of information to be used. So the Shelf Life Extension Program found that uh, of the 122 drugs, two-thirds of them were stable and fine four years or more after they've been stored. This is basically the same as it is in America as it everywhere else in the West. Both federal and state laws prevent pharmacists from dispensing expired medication. Seems good, let's protect the public. But when those expiry dates are based upon 100% certainty that it's not changed at all, and we know two-thirds or more of those medications are stable and efficient for up to four years after their actual expiry dates and we know it's costing billions of dollars you have to ask yourself why haven't everybody in America and Canada and everywhere else reached out and got the same cost savings that the uh, Air Force and the Department of Defense have got from their shelf life extension program well the answer is fairly simple political lobbying. Now one of the interesting ones is EpiPens. Um, I actually got a found EpiPen, I don't use them, but I put it in my first aid kit and I showed it and quite a few people asked me what about the expiry date? Uh, because expiry dates don't mean that it switches off and doesn't work on that date, but a lot of people are trained and programmed by the pharmaceutical companies for some good reasons, but mostly for economic, to see an expiry date as you throw it out. And um, we're trained by capitalism to do this. Like very few people will pay full price for a tin of baked beans that expired yesterday. Though the truth is, they're fine. But, what about EpiPens? EpiPens is the one that I think has been very short recently. And I think they cost 200 to 300 dollars American in the States to get. Very expensive products and people having to get them on prescription and throw them out. I think every year, don't quote me on it. So this is a really interesting study. Small scale, but interesting. They asked people to donate their expired EpiPens to be studied. Now they asked the public. So most of these EpiPens would not have been stored at 60 Fahrenheit in a stable condition. They'll have been carried around in purses, left in trunks of cars, all of that stuff. Hot and cold. Not ideal circumstances to maintain a drug stability. So what did they find when they tested these 40 donated EpiPens? Now, they'd have been expired between one month and 50 months. I would expect the one month would be fine. I would expect the 50 month, if epinephrine is unstable in this solution, to be expired. What they found when they looked at it was that 24 of the 40 syringes had at least 90% of the medication still effective and potent. Basically, fine to use. Definitely in a life or death situation, using a 90% um, functional EpiPen is going to do the job. Okay, 24 out of the 40, 90% effective. That's great news if you've got EpiPens and you don't want to buy one uh, all the t every year or whenever you have to buy them. However, all 40 EpiPens were 80% or more effective, including the one that was 50 months expired. So I think you can say from that, given the fact that they were kept in poor conditions, if you can keep your epi EpiPen in a good condition, avoid exposure to light, avoid exposure to heat and severe cold, I think you can generally say that your EpiPen will probably work, can't be guaranteed, for 50 months after the expiry date. 
this is a massive, massive cost saving. And it also means in grid down, three months, three years after the fall of society, if you come across medications or an EpiPen, keep it. And then try and store it well. It probably will be fairly effective. It may not be 100% effective, but it probably will be okay. Now I'm going to point out to you, I use the example of EpiPens, and I think that's a really important one. But for most liquids, or liquids in capsules, or liquids, the expiry date is going to be a lot shorter than it will be for solid pills. A lot shorter. Now this is a pretty good article uh, from the Survival Doctor, and I will link this. They use the Shelf Life Extension Program. They say that vacuum sealing doesn't help keep them in their original containers because they're well done and the liquids are obviously going to be a lot worse and they're looking at antibiotics and I think this is kind of interesting now one of the things is tetracycline tetracycline will harm you and destroy your liver if it's gone bad so obviously you don't want to take expired and gone off tetracycline but tetracycline can go off before the expiry date if in bad conditions so you should know what your medications are, like you should know tetracycline's a pale yellow powder. You should know that if it starts to look brown, you really need to dump it or feed it to your enemies. They give a whole bunch of antibiotics and ranges and stuff like that and how long the Shelf Life Extension Program gave them. And that's useful for antibiotics. But what about the rest of it? Now I had a really hard time getting into the information database on Shelf Life Extension Program. Um, not surprisingly, I don't think they want Joe Public to understand this. But they come across this Mayo Clinic article, which I will also link, which has some clues to uh, things that expire and when. So I will be putting this up as well as pictures, and it's kind of interesting. Of course, tetracycline was known about. I don't know if many modern nurses know, but I certainly was trained about tetracycline toxicity and how to examine the stuff I was given to make sure it wasn't. Interestingly they changed the formulation quite some time ago and it probably isn't that likely to break down anymore. So a lot of the big scary things we're told about uh, aren't true. But again I will mention aspirin. Aspirin if it smells at all of vinegar, do not use it. Um, but most medications, if they're being given in SHGF for life survival, are probably worth it being given to the patient even if the patient hasn't got a supply that's new. So for sure, when I looked at Richard J's medications, which I won't show you because it's private, uh, I'm pretty certain that all three of those medications, Richard, if you store them in their original bottles and if you keep them in a reasonably calm and cool temperature without direct sunlight, probably will last you for five years but I would actually expect those five to last 10 to 40 years. I can't guarantee it. It's very privileged information from the pharmaceutical companies, but given what you're taking and given other medications, I think it's fairly safe to assume that. Now, the other thing about the Shelf Life Extension Program people don't talk about is that they do them in two batches. One's just properly looked after and one's given hot and cold temperatures, and then they do a mean average of effectiveness. So the actual life is a lot stronger if you don't have it going hot and cold. The other one is that they actually give the extension in a mean, not the actual amount of extension. So if for some reason one batch of a hundred dies on day one, exaggerating, it will bring the mean down. So on average the mean is roughly where almost all of the medications will be effective. Whereas the actual extension of life would probably go beyond that. So you can find books like these in most uh, universities that have nursing schools and medical schools attached to them and you can get them second hand. You do not need the 2019. Anything that's like five to ten years old is perfectly fine and you need a book drug book that you can use. There's different types of these. Buying one brand new for 2019 is expensive. But they tell you the dosage for uh, women who are pregnant. They tell you the dosage for adults. They tell you the dosage for children. They tell you the dosage for babies. Tell you how it works. Tell you the uses. Tell you the contraindications, which is really important. And tell you how to prescribe it and what could go wrong. 
all of this sort of information is a good book to have. Certainly if you have a medic in your support group and they don't have a proper pharmaceutical book like this, I would question how useful they're going to be to you. Sure, they might be able to slap an Israeli bandage on, but that's not what's going to kill most people in SHT after the initial chaos. It's going to be treating infectious diseases and they need to know what they're doing and they need to have a good supply of antibiotics. I have mine from pets. Uh, they're just as fine as humans and they need to know how to prescribe what to do. Um, if you ever watch a video on any antibiotics in Grid Down and they don't use the term gram positive and gram negative, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, A lot of people out there are talking about medicines and pharmacy with no educational background and it's time people stop doing that because it is going to kill them themselves and anybody that listens to them in grid down. Well I hope you found that fascinating. I am not a pharmacist, and I am not a medical doctor and I am not a chemist. Talk to chemists, uh, talk to pharmacists. They, it's interesting, a lot of pharmacists are actually taking expired medications home and stockpiling them themselves if they're a prepper and they're actually using them on their own family. Just because your pills expired yesterday is not a cause for concern for any medication at all. Uh, two, three weeks after the expiry date, yeah, maybe you want to get a fresh supply in. Especially if your life is dependent on it because you're taking cardiac or diabetic medications. But a lot of meds will last an awful lot longer than what people know. And people say things like 10 years. No, some will not last 10 years. Some will last beyond 10 years. It really depends on the medication. So if you are on medications, have a look at this stuff that I'm going to put up. And if you aren't on medications, print out some of this stuff and keep it in a little binder. If you come across medications and grid down, isn't it a good idea to know roughly if they're effective or not? And on a personal note, I have a box of meds. And I have meds that were prescribed to my dogs from five years ago in blister packs that are solid medications and I'm keeping them. I can use them on human beings just as easily as on the dogs. There are a few dog specific medications you don't want to use so you kind of need to know what you're doing. So you also kind of need a drug book. Anyway remember in SHT if you don't prep tomorrow will always be worse than today. So let's get prepping. Mm -hmm.